Good morning, and it's Lilia from Heal Scotland here. Um, today is day two of the intermittent fasting challenge, but whether you're doing the challenge or not, this video will maybe help you and uh, maybe members of your family, your friends, to understand a little bit more about the incredible power of fasting. Morning, Craig. Um, but not only the power of fasting, because I think most people now understand that um, the food that we're eating and the amount of food that we're eating um, is participating in a lot of our morning, Nikki, a lot of our high les, uh, our health issues. Um, so I think most people have some level, hi Izzy, of awareness um, that what we eat and drink impacts on how we feel and think. Hi, Sean. Oh, great. You're going to see the kids. Fantastic. Hi, Mark. Morning, Mark. Yeah, so we're just... Um, I want to recap a little bit on what um, we talked about, Janice and I, yesterday, and you probably gather we get so excited. We're so passionate about getting this information um, out to you because we know the difference that it makes. Um, and also we um, want to make sure that it comes to you in a, a doable way, <laughs> that you're inspired to want to learn more and that you're inspired to take action. Because as we know, knowledge doesn't heal you. <laughs> it's action that heals you. So we already know that fasting and intermittent fasting um, the, the health benefits, if you want to learn more, go to the um, the page and watch that fasting documentary. It is truly mind-blowing what we can achieve by moving out the way, stopping putting food into the body and allowing it to heal itself. And um, morning, Mary. And it's free and you know how I like that. Um, but one of the big problems that, about the fact that it's free is that there's no money to be made by teaching people to fast. Um, and that really holds us back in terms of the science. Um, and again, you know, when you do your research, you'll realise this information's been around for a long time. I've got a friend whose husband's got di uh, type 2 diabetes and recently she spent an hour with a, a, a real nutritionist um, who explained, she said, more than an hour than she'd learned in 20 years. The information, the outdated information that you may be getting about what you should be eating. Um, it takes a long time to filter down and through into the system. And I learned a lot of this stuff like 15 years ago. That's how long it's only now coming to the fore, how incredibly important it is. Not just what you eat in terms of your proteins and your fats and your carbohydrates, but when you eat them. And for me, the intermittent fasting is phenomenal because it even if you stick to eating what you're always eight and just compress your eating window, you're going to get a result. So without having to initiate too much change, because we all know that we don't like change. <laughs> we don't want to change what we eat and we don't want to change when we eat. We don't we want to stay the same, but get results. And, you know, the harsh reality is <laughs> we if we want changes to happen within the body and the mind and the soul, we have to be the pilot of that change. So this is a really simple way to do it. Just change the times that you eat and squeeze it into it. You can even start with 11 or 12 hours. It doesn't have to be six or eight. You can just make sure that for at least 12, 13 hours of the day, your body has got nothing to do except restore and repair. Okay, so now let's just, let's just talk a little bit about what Janice was saying yesterday about feeding your microbiome and we have all these little um, microbiomes <laughs> in our gut that need fed. And that's why we're eating food and that's why we're craving foods. And when you balance your microbiome, and there are various ways to do that depending on how sick you may be, um, then you will all the cravings drop away and you will crave the good the food that actually feed the microbiome and why is that really important? Because if you are suffering suffering from anxiety and depression and autoimmune disease, then this is the way to heal yourself. And fasting 
is a really powerful way to start um, eliminating um, bad habits. Taking control of what you put in your mouth and when you put in your mouth will just empower you to a degree that you really have to try it to, to experience. Because you can listen to me banging on about this all day, every day, but until you actually take um, control and try it on your own body, then you'll not, you're not going to know for sure. So start with, uh, you know, compressing your food into a window and as I say, it can even be 12, 12, seven in the morning till seven at night and do not eat another thing in the evening. This evening eating and um, again, going back to the documentary um, fasting, if you look, Brian Clements from the Hippocrates Institute will tell you that stop eating and have three hours before you go to bed. <clears throat> so your last meal's got to be before seven o'clock and then have three hours before you go to bed with the circadian rhythm, 10 p.m., and then all your healing hormones when you fall asleep will flood in and the body will do the repair necessary. You don't do the healing, you do the harming. <laughs> and when you move out the way, the body will heal itself. So what Janice was saying was about, you know, eating foods with fibre. Because what we know is the fibre that will pick things up going through the digestive tract and then we excrete them out the other end and it helps to keep the biome happy and balance. And um, Janice and I have been talking, you know, about the best way to help getting recipes to you. You know, think about instead of thinking about what you can't do, <laughs> well, I've got to give up this and I have to give up that. And perhaps it's your wine in the evening that you don't want to give up or whatever, your chocolate or your bread. And what we're just saying is we'll compress it into this window one step at a time. If you try and put too many changes in, you'll hate it and you'll fail and you'll feel bad about yourself and you'll beat yourself up. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The challenges around fasting and finding a way to be successful with your body. Now, on my banter from the burn this morning, you know, I get really angry that this information <laughs> is not out in the public. And as somebody said to me, why has nobody else written this book, Scotland's Wild Medicine? Why is this information not out there? Well, it actually is out there. You'll find it on YouTube. You can find it on great blogs and podcasts. But the reality is when you go to your health practitioner, you, the likelihood is they're not allowed to tell you a lot of things because they treat symptoms and not the root cause. And if our country goes bankrupt and we, we can't have drugs, what are you going to do then? Well, you're going to buy Scotland's Wild Medicine and all the information that you need in order to get well will be there in the book for you. So you, we're looking at prevention. And the other problem right now is that our system is all about pharmaceutical drugs and surgery. And if you want to choose something else, there is no support network in place unless you've got a lot of money where you can go on a retreat or go to the Hippocrates Institute or um, to the Gerson uh, Clinic. And, you know, most of us cannot afford to do that. And we don't know enough about it. So what we want to do with Heal Scotland is bring in communities all over the country where you can go and be supported in how you, the things that you can do to help yourself. Now, off, you may need some intervention from conventional medicine, but you may not. And if we can take enough of the stress off the NHS by standing in our power, educating ourselves, taking action and doing it in groups because it's no fun really trying to do it yourself, supporting each other, then we can transform the health and happiness of our communities. Quite simply, we can do that by creating groups where you can meditate, where you can learn to breathe, where you can learn to get cold if you want to do that, where you can learn how to cook, <laughs> where we can grow our own foods, where we can make sure that our indigenous plants and trees and medicine is, is, is not being concreted over by greedy construction companies. We need the land. The land is what provides all the medicines for us. And even with our plant medicines, that's the other thing that I'm really just understanding, the phenomenal power in our medicines to heal PTSD and trauma. It grows just right out there, outside your house, if you're lucky enough to live in the country. And we've been told, no, you can't eat that, you can't smoke that, you can't drink that. I mean, seriously. And what's crazy about it is it's normally started with one person, usually one man, that says, no, we're not doing this. And they push their agenda so hard that the rest of us fall in, even with the whole fat myth. You know, fat is bad for you. Fat gives you heart disease. It's rubbish. 
And it was started really with one person who pushed his agenda through. So now what we have to do is we have to try and decide what's right, what's wrong for us. And the phenomenal thing um, is that you have that intelligence inside you when you let go of all your old programs and beliefs and limitations. Now, who am I to tell you what to eat compared to a doctor or a specialist or whatever? I can assure you, <laughs> every single day, all I do is research, research, research. How can you heal without toxic treatments and fear? That's my main thing. What can we do to help ourselves? And how can we get back to really healthy, happy communities that serves all the people and not just the elite? 56 more billionaires since the pandemic started. And look at the destruction for so many people with their businesses, including mine. I can't get out to do all the things that I do to help people. You know, so we have, we are forced now to go online. We're forced to take this time and turn it around and make sure that we, the people, <laughs> are empowered. Now, what happens, you might know, right, okay, fasting works, but I don't want to do without food. It's my only pleasure in life and I'm not giving it up. That is totally fine. This video is not for you. If you know and understand that you have the power, you're just not quite sure what to do and how to do it, then this video is for you if you're ready to take action and inspire the people around you. So why would you do it? Well, more energy, more clarity, more patience with your family, more patience with the government. Um, type 2 diabetes, it's a no-brainer for type 2 diabetes. Um, if, again, go and watch the fasting documentary. You'll see all the polycystic ovaries, all these hormonal-driven problems and cancers are being driven primarily, but not, not uh, solely, by our food and our food chain and the destruction and pollution of it. So when we start to understand these signalling systems, and the actual fact, when you can stop putting the wrong signals in, i.e. any food, doesn't matter whether it's healthy or not, for a certain amount of time, the, you're just basically giving that body back the time in order to heal itself. So there, I'm not going to bang on about all the reasons why you should do it. I'm assuming that you're on this video because you're either doing it or you're interested in doing it. So we understand that it works. We have thousands and thousands of case studies reversing type 2 diabetes in a very short space of time. Michael Mosley's research, research shows has shown that the longer you've had type 2 diabetes, it may take you longer to heal it. If you've only just been diagnosed or had it for the last few years, then you'll change it very, very quickly. But it may be that the longer you've had it, the more ingrained your habits are. And, you know, the, the classic old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, it turns out you can, but maybe the old dog doesn't want to learn new tricks. <laughs> so that's where it comes to change. And this, again, the phenomenal power of the plant medicines, where we have furrowed these uh, neural pathways into our brain. I can't do this. I can't do that. This is bad. This is wrong. What this? What worry? 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 Fear? 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 And then we'll say, I am just a worrier. No, you're not. You are, you probably inherited. You probably watched your parents worrying, etc. You watched somebody else, or maybe your gut biome's completely out of balance, so you're in a fear state all the time. And then. You're, you keep thinking the same things every day, doing the same things every day with the same people at the same times, do, do, do. And before you know it, you are a creature of habit. It happens to all of us. So we are creatures of habits and we're programmed to do the same things. And a lot of that's handy. You can go out now, jump in your car, drive somewhere, not even think about it because you've done that so often you can do it without thinking which is super handy, obviously. But what happens, we've got a lot of things in there that are not serving us that we're doing without thinking. And one of the big things when you start to fast is remembering not to put food in your mouth. <laughs> now, I live in my own, so it's really easy just not to buy any other food in. But I understand that if you've got a young family or you're cooking for other people, you, will, you maybe will have in your house a lot of foods that you really should not be eating in order to heal yourself. So you then have to find a way 
of making sure that food is out of sight and out of mind. But the big thing is to increase your levels of fat, even more than your proteins, so that you're not hungry. Because when you're not hungry, it'll not even occur to you to put something in your mouth. So what we're going to do today is look at our habits. And for most people that I know that would, I mean, I've obviously been working in this field for decades now. It's the evening that can be a, ch a challenge. And especially now where maybe it's dark and wet and icy outside. So you, you sit and watch the TV and you'll get bored, right? And you'll think, what can I eat? Because <laughs> that's what we do. Or maybe you're a morning person and you're putting your fasting time till 10, 11, 12 o'clock. Um, but now oh, you're thinking if you're up early, all you're thinking about is your breakfast. It doesn't really matter what your challenge is. You can change your perception around it. Now, as my friend Jim always says, it's what is your why? Why are you doing this? Why would you do it? If you're not doing it, why would you do it? Maybe you want to lose weight. Maybe you want to unfog your mind. Maybe you're exhausted. Maybe you're anxious. Maybe you're depressed. Maybe you've got autoimmune disease. Maybe you've been told you're incurable or, ter or terminal and you believe there's no point in trying anything else. This is absolutely about today. What can we do today to make ourselves feel better? Now, when you stop eating, <laughs> immediately you're giving the body energy. 80% of our daily energy goes on digesting our food. So that 80% of energy, if you don't eat for 12 hours, 14, 16, 18 hours, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the 18, 6. Can you imagine 18 hours every day for two weeks? How much energy that's going to give me back? How am I going to sleep? It's going to impact my sleep because that's when the body's repairing and restoring. So your sleep's going to be easier because you've not shoved a whole load of stuff into your washing machine and expecting the machine to be able to deal with it. You only put in as much as the washing machine can take if you want your clothes clean. So it's the same with us with food. And we all are, as particularly during lockdown, we're eating as a social pastime and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean, God, we need to keep ourselves sane sometimes. So this is why I'm saying don't try and put too much change in right now. Don't add to the stress that we're all already under. Find something that will empower you and that you feel you can um, adhere to. And then you'll be empowered. And find somebody else to do it with. So you can um, swap recipes. You can talk to each other on the phone. You're like, ah, I'm starving. I want to eat. Because that's a common one. I'm starving. I'm starving. No, you're not. You're definitely not starving. You have a feeling in your body and you're... Um, looking at that feeling and going, that means I need to eat. You Just because you have a feeling in your gut doesn't mean to say you have to shove food in to make it go away. So what would you do instead? Well, drink some herbal tea. You can have a black coffee. I wouldn't recommend a lot of black coffee, obviously, in a day. But if that's going to help you not eat, go on ahead because this is about fasting. It's not. We're not looking primarily at the what we're eating we're looking at not the, the time that we're not eating that's where the power is and if you want to I just highly recommend you watch that documentary because it's so so super exciting because what I want to do is give you the tools that if you were ever to get a horrible diagnosis you understand how breathing and fasting and juicing um, and coffee enemas and turpentine and all the protocols, meditation, visualisation, all these protocols we're going to teach you from the Heal Scotland page. You can, all of these things that you'll be able to do to take control and change your chemistry and your biology simply by doing all these things for yourself. Because right now we're not teaching it in schools and we're not getting it at the doctor's surgery. So you're going to have to, if you want to know about it, educate yourself it's your body, it's your responsibility. <laughs> so what happens with the habits? Um, if you are out of control with your food, as a lot of us are, chances are you're eating far too much carbohydrate and not nearly enough fat because you'll be terrified from that 1980s campaign that said, fat kills you, it furs up your arteries, yada, yada, yada. Nothing could be further from the truth. Um, so we're now, I'm talking quality fats, obviously. Whole foods. <laughs> so when you up your fat intake, you will 
switch off your hunger and you'll feel a lot fuller. So simple things like having these fat bombs, I put a, um, a link to that in the in the event. Have these snacks ready so that if you if you are hungry, you've got something that's going to fill you up. Boiled eggs are great as well. And if you do dairy, you can have bits of cheese and, um, you know, th that are actually going to fill you up and stop you from cheating. And then we look at the mind. So what happens is as soon as you take food out, and Byron Katie does this in her workshops, she just doesn't feed people. <laughs> and if you want to drive somebody crazy, then put them in a fast that they didn't want to go on. So the mind will come in, this is a lot of rubbish, this doesn't work, and it'll tell you all the reasons why you should give up, or you're too tired, or you're not feeling well, or, or you don't have time, all this nonsense that comes in, because the mind, the ego is saying, no, you don't need to, you don't need to change, stay like this, stay like this. That's the past. The past comes in, the programmes come in, the excuses come in. And then it becomes, it doesn't matter what you're trying to come off, whether it's drugs or alcohol or sugar or whatever, the mind will always, always be the thing that will start you or stop you. And that's why I'm going to show you the techniques and why it's very, very good and powerful to really remind yourself why you're doing this. Why are you doing it? So for me, I, I've got a belly now <laughs> that I've not had for years and I want to shrink that back down. I also want to take rein in my eating for greater levels of clarity and energy because the Heal Scotland movement is really taking off at a whole new level now. So I, I'm going to have to walk my walk and be on my best mental and physical shape in order to get this information out and for people to actually believe me. So this intermittent fasting challenge is going to work for me as well as it's going to work for you. So as soon as we do that, the, the, the mind will want to, oh, what about the weekends? Oh, I like my glass of wine at the weekend, or I like my beer, or I like my chocolate, or, you know, that that's what the mind will do. Or, oh, I've got an event, maybe not so much now, obviously, because we don't have anything to go to. But trust me, this is what people do. Oh, I've got a wedding, oh, I've got a party, I've got this, I've got that. All of these are actually saying, I cannot adhere to intermittent fasting because it means that I can't have fun. And again, you just shift your window around um, so that you, you're still having that fasting period of 12 to 18 hours with no food. And right now, during lockdown, is a great time to do this because we're not going out to parties and clubs and bars, etc. at the weekends as much. <laughs> Maybe you are. You're lucky if you're sneaking out somewhere. But what, so we can actually go, right, OK. And you can shift your window by an hour to maybe have dinner um, with your family or your bubble. Um, and then you can, so it's just as long as you stick to that fasting time. So let's look at what happens. Let's start off with looking at why you would want to do it. Why would you use intermittent fasting? Why are you doing it? What do you want to achieve? And it may be weight loss. It may be energy and clarity, maybe excitement for life again. It's maybe to move yourself out of anxiety and depression and fear. It may be to heal some autoimmune disease. It might be to heal, maybe you're recovering from cancer or some other disease to start taking your power and really getting to know that body of yours and how the cells work. So you are the pilot of this ship. So it doesn't matter what your why is. I want you just now just to visualise yourself the way you would love to be. Fasting is also a really powerful spiritual practice. When you take food out, it's easier to connect into your intuition and your imagination. So, you know, it may be that there's a spiritual reason why you would do this, to feel more connected to the universe, to the divine, to the field of potentials. All of these reasons are amazing. And they're all individual to you. Maybe you want a bit of all of that action, like me. Be able to hear what the body's saying. Because if your body is digesting food, then it's taken away. You, you, it doesn't have time to do all the rest. So we're giving it that space and we're using that time to connect in and really listen. Because your intuition, that's the next thing I'm going to be looking at, is your superpower. 
what is right for your body will not be right for mine and vice versa. We are individual beings and there's no one size fits all. So learning to trust yourselves so that you can be the best version of you and just feel great every day for absolutely no reason. So what I want you to do right now is use the power of your imagination. Just close your eyes and see yourself the way you would love to be with the levels of energy you'd love to have, with the levels of health and well-being that you'd love to have, the weight you'd like to be, the clothes you'd like to be wearing, the connection, the trust that you would have, and all that is. <clears throat> Whatever is your why, see it now. Feel that like it's already here. You are now changing your electromagnetic field using your imagination. So really see it, really feel it, yes, and then just let it go out for creation. And any doubt that you have power over your body and that you can heal yourself, just welcome any doubt, any feeling of power being powerless. Welcome that feeling and just let it go. And any trying to figure out why, what, where, but, what, if, all of that, all the trying to figure out how it's going to happen, how you're going to maintain it, how you're going to stick to it, how you're going to find the willpower, all of that. Welcome all of that and just let it go. Set it free. Just for now. Try it. Let go. Okay. I know any feeling that you are different and you can't do it and you're not enough and that you, for some reason, are a victim of your body, any of that, any feeling that you're a victim of the body, welcome that too. And then just let it go. I can hear my stomach rumbling. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Any feeling that I can't, it's going to be hard, it's going to be difficult and I'm going to have to give up all the things I love and poor me, poor me, all of that. Welcome it. Welcome the story, welcome the narrative, and just let it go. Set it free. Okay. And see yourself again. Close your eyes and see yourself clearly. If you'd never done any visualisation before, then it might feel a bit weird. It might take, you might not feel as if you're really getting into it. Practice. So see yourself, feel it, you can write it down, make your goal crystal clear so that the atoms of creation know what it is that you want. This is a direct intention. There is no doubt here. It is a law. <laughs> the law of attraction. What is it? You get what you feel. And then you have to let go of all the things that take you away from that. Okay, so you can spend a little time doing that yourself. What exactly is it you want? And then what's going to stop you from getting that? So the mind, I'm really hungry. Oh, this isn't working for me. Oh, I've got a sore head. Oh, I've got this. Oh, I've got that. Oh, what am I going to do tomorrow? Oh, blah, 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 blah. All the mind stuff comes in. So what we're going to do... Is, and there's loads and loads of things you can do if time is an issue. And I know it is. I know some people are juggling a lot of balls right now in terms of childcare, homeschooling and shopping and working and all of that. And that's there's some brilliant nutritional shakes. Um, and, you know, my friend Mandy Moore and Angela McVicker can keep you right on that. Find a way. You know, are shakes the optimum nutrition? Could you go out in your garden and pick all these live foods? No, most of us can't do that. But there are absolutely brilliant way to get live nutrition, dense nutrition into the body. 
um, and they're relatively cheap or the same value, uh, the, you know, the same cost. And also it's just fast. And um, if you're busy, I highly recommend rather than having a bit of toast or whatever, having a shake. And you can make your own. I'm going to make some videos on that as well, making your own nutrient dense shakes. OK, so time. The top two reasons why Scots don't look after themselves is um, they're too tired and they don't have time. And that's why you need to find a solution to that. And fasting takes zero energy at all. You really, as I say, you can just eat the same food in, in a tighter window and then you don't have to do anything. So that takes care of the too tiredness. And I don't have time. Well, that reason slash excuse dissolves as well because it doesn't take any time to fast. So what else is the mind going to chuck up? Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I need, I need, I need, I need. And it could be your microbiome going, give me sugar, you always give me sugar, I want sugar, I want sugar. So let's do a tap round on sugar addiction. And it might not be sugar. Well, it might not appear to be sugar. It can come in bread, crisps, so more carbohydrate, simple carbohydrate. That the minute you eat it, it turns to glucose. So it's the same thing. It's the same blood sugar spike. And if you have type 2 diabetes, you want to be keeping your sugars your fats up and your sugars down so if you want to eat sugar by all means eat it in your compressed window I'm not saying you need to cut out everything but if you are not well and if you really are serious about this sugar has to go certainly for a, a period of time so let's just do something on sugar cravings because they can be very real and you can find as an addiction they say sugar's as addictive as heroin and I think when you see people eating a lot of sweeties and stuff you're just like wow why would you do that unless just what's driving it? It's not your willpower. It's not your stupid. It's just your microbiome is screaming for it. And that's it's a signal in the brain what you need, what you need, crave, crave, crave. So get your fats up. That'll douse the cravings and use EFT. OK, so but here here's the thing. Before you reach for the sugar or the bit of bread or the glass of wine or whatever, do the tapping first. OK, because the urge will come in and it's like oh, that feeling. And all we're doing with EFT is helping you release the feeling. And you will, if you are a sugar head, you'll probably have to do it over and over again for the next two weeks until you really release that habit and empower yourself. Because when the physical addiction is going and that can go really quickly, then it's the mental one. It's just like, this is what I do when I'm sitting watching TV. This is what I do when I'm get the girls round or whatever. This is what I do when I go on my Zoom call, whatever it is that you're doing. We're looking at replacing habits, changing habits, habits that are going to really give the body back all its life and vitality. Okay, so just tap with me. Even although I want to eat foods that I know are not good for me, and even although I don't want to restrict myself in any shape or form, I don't want to change what I eat. I don't want to change the times that I eat. I just want to stay the same, but I want big changes at the same time. And even although I get cravings, even although my body or my mind or something saying, eat this, eat that, you need this, you want this, don't deny yourself, life is hard enough. Even although I'm listening to all these things that my body's saying, my mind's saying, I deeply and completely love, trust and accept myself. Even although I have this self-sabotage inner chat, one won't harm you. Oh, it's Friday. Oh, it's Saturday. These are the special days where you can sabotage all your good plans. <laughs> Even although I feel resistance coming in and even although I know this is good for me, I know how great I'm going to feel at the end of two weeks, I'm still listening to the mind chat and listening to that inner voice and wanting to break the vast and wanting to eat foods when I'm not supposed to. But even although I'm having all of these experiences and I understand it's just the ego, the habits, the past, the programming and my comfort. I deeply and completely love 
trust and accept myself. Even though I'm just a normal human that's learning about this amazing body. And even although I just didn't really understand how it worked before, that I was feeding the microbiome. The microbiome was deciding how I feel and what I eat and what I want. I thought it was me being an idiot. And now I'm beginning to understand. Wow, I can take control of this. I am learning that I have an incredible power. An incredible power to heal myself. Even although sometimes I listen and believe my thoughts. And even although I think that feeling in my gut means I'm hungry because I want to eat, because I want to make that feeling go away. Even although I'm misreading the signals and making up stories that don't serve me, <laughs> I deeply and completely love, trust and accept myself. Even although sometimes I believe my thoughts and my feelings. Okay, deep breath. Now that may not resonate with everyone. You know, not everybody struggles with fasting, but if you do, and if that resonates, then it's just, it's all it is is thoughts and feelings. And you know that you can change your thoughts and feelings when you choose. As Janice said yesterday, it's all about choices. Choose to tap away the negative and focus on your why. So, all, so I, this is the way I always do my EFT, even although, even although, even although, even although all this, even although I hate this, even although I've got resistance, even although, yeah, 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 I deeply and completely love, trust and accept myself because that voice is not real. These feelings don't really mean anything. But, so you have to decide to override your thoughts and your feelings. They are not real and they are not you. They're all from the past. And who wants to live through the past? Not me. So now we start looking at, right, okay, what do I want? How would I love it to be? I'm so happy to be back in control of my habits. I am overriding these old negative programs and laying down new, powerful, super highways. I have the power to heal myself. I have the power to be aware of resistance and to tap resistance away and smile at it. I have free will on this planet and I am powerful and only waking up to this incredible power that I have. Withholding food from the body for controlled periods of time will help me heal will help me look the way I want to look, will help me heal any disease in the body. I'm giving back the body this gift of time, this incredible power and time to heal itself. I have the power inside. I am allowing myself to override the old habits, the old programmes. I am in charge, I am in control. I am flying this body, I am tell talking to it, I am guiding it, I am feeding it or not. I am breathing the way it needs to be breathed in order to have full vitality and power. I am a powerful, sentient, spiritual, energetic being. A deep breath. Okay. So, if you don't want it, don't say it. Telling yourself that you're starving is clearly not helpful. <laughs> Maybe you just think, right, okay, for me now it's going to be an hour and a quarter till I have my brunch. So what are you going to do in that time? Go for a walk, watch something really powerful, really amazing, 
on Netflix, Amazon Prime. There's hundreds of documentaries, YouTube as well, if you if you don't have that, that can empower you and really embody this information so that you don't just know, you uh, no, you don't just believe, you know. You absolutely know how powerful you are because you've actually taken this technique and you've used it in your own body. And buddy up, have somebody you can call and say, ah, resistance is in, or get on here, just find the, um, the, the EFT videos, I've got a whole channel of them, and tap and understand in a really quiet and powerful way. It's just the past talking, it's just the program talking. It's just the limitation. The limitation is not you. And it only can have power over you if you choose to believe it. And if you just realise, oh, that's a thought, a sabotage, a self-sabotage thought. Wow, I can just tap that away. Oh, right, okay. I nearly believed that thought there. Whoo, that was close. And if you've been believing your thoughts and your feelings for a long time, then it may be very challenging um, to override because you'll find yourself slipping into old habits when you're not present in the moment. Um, the documentary is called Fasting and it's on the Heal Scotland page and it's on my page and it's I think I even put it in the event. Um, so it's all different ways to fast. So you, what you're doing is you're overriding your old programming, you're taking back free will. Your body, your subconscious mind, which is your body, is running your life because you don't understand it. You don't realise, <laughs> oh my God, all these microbiome in there, because I'm feeding the wrong microbes, I am feeling like this. I mean, that is just mental. Nobody has taught us the power. I'm 60 and I'm only discovering this stuff. Imagine teaching your kids this stuff. How, when to sleep, when to eat, what to eat, and how to breathe. I mean, really? And then you're not going to get sick. That prevention has got to be where it's at. But if you have a diagnosis or if you get one, you have all these, all this information and all these protocols that you can go to, but you have to use them. Can't emphasise this enough. Knowing what to do does not heal you. You can be the big, and you'll see people that go course after course after course and have all this stuff. It doesn't matter. Take a few basic things and repeat them every single day. They're called practices because you have to practice them and get good at them. And as soon as you drop your fear of fasting, and I'm going to do a quick release on that as well, and understand that fasting is another superpower, then if you ever did we're unlucky and we, we none of us know the day that that could knock on your door. Then you have these tools, you understand. Ah, okay, I'll put myself into ketosis, into autophagy, and then just let the body, I'll meditate and visualise and I'll breathe and I'll give the body that power to heal and time to heal itself. And Heal Scotland's going to bring you the support in order to take your power back and understand that the only reason that you're not powerful is because you don't believe you are. And it all comes down to beliefs. So let's just tap around around fasting. If you if fasting has terrified you, then it's time to change that belief. <laughs> I have the power in me to withhold food for anything from 12 to 18 hours whenever I choose. I am fully capable of understanding the power in fast, of fasting, of watching all the documentaries, reading any books, or just listening to Lilia, following the Heal Scotland page, educating myself, and don't take any of these words for it. Try it on your own body. The power to heal is within every single one of us. There is no money to be made in this. I have to take the action. I have to take my power back. I am letting go of all fear of fasting, letting go of all limiting beliefs that I am not enough, that I am not good enough, that I don't have the willpower. I am learning. I feed the microbiome and I regain my power. I allow myself to unfold to the magic of fasting. I have the power. I am the power. And I'm letting go of all limiting beliefs and resistance around fasting. I have 
the power. Okay, deep breath. Now, if you um, are still scared of fasting, just keep repeating that. A belief is just simply a thought that you've had over and over and over and over again and suddenly you think it's real. You believe it. Oh, I can't do this. Really? Yes, you can. You don't want to or you're not prepared to do what it takes. If you are prepared to do what it takes, and this is where we have to get to right now, you need to stand in your power. Take your responsibility for that body which you can, is the container for your soul. You, it is listening to everything you think, say, feel, do, believe and perceive. Everything. This power. Stop eating for 12 to 18 hours a day and feel the difference. Don't take my word for it. Try it on your own body. Don't wait for trials, etc. Just try it. You be the trial. That's where we need to get to, not waiting for other people to tell us what to do. We own the power. We have the power. It's innate in every single one of us. And our programming and our culture and our beliefs and our the coercion from the powers, the greedy corporations have led us to believe that we need something outside ourselves to heal and nothing could be further from the truth. So it's very, very exciting times. Thanks to everybody who's joining in and really getting involved. It's magic to see the enthusiasm. I will answer any questions um, after because I, I find it really distracting when I'm trying to answer questions when I'm actually doing the live. So I'll um, finish off for today. Tomorrow we're going to be doing breathing exercises to speed up your metabolism. Um, remember when you start to put fat in, your muscle comes up. Contrary to everything you've been told, fat makes you thin, in fact and it douses inflammation, so you know, the muscle comes up and the, the stored fat goes down. So get on board, get involved, it's never too late to start, and I'll see you all tomorrow at 10. Ciao!